Le président, veuillez vous asseoir. The court is now in session. L'audience est ouverte. The floor will be once again given to the prosecution to continue putting questions to the expert. L'accusation peut à présent continuer à interroger l'expert. L'accusation. Thank you, Mr. President, and Merci, good, night. good morning, Your Honours. Uh, good morning, Council, and a good morning to you, Mr. Philip Short. Bonjour à vous, Monsieur Philip Short. As you will have heard from the President's instructions yesterday, these are Comme the, the final le President, stages of my examination. And after approximately an hour and a half, I'll be handing the Dans floor environ to une heure et demie, my colleagues, uh, la representatives of the civil parties. Now, picking up where we left off yesterday, we were looking at hier, a, a minute of a meeting nous uh, of examinions le the standing verbal committee, réunion du comité permanent, which for the record was E3-232. And we looked at the reports Nous avons given by three uh, sector secretaries uh, in relation to events in their regions and you opined about the nature of those reports et on a parlé and other reports that we've looked rapports at. Et rapports. Just uh, taking one step back and looking at the attendance record, en arrière. and ce qui est de la liste des participants, again here you uh, you said to us yesterday that um, your view secretary was Pol Pot, deputy Vous secretary was Noon Chia, comrade Han Pol Pot. was Q San Khan. Pol Pot. Le secrétaire adjoint Noon Chia, sur le interprète. Can I ask you whether you dit. have been able to come to a view as to why Q San Khan's attendance Selon vous, was required or appropriate uh, at, at a meeting of this nature? Devait-il être présent? Q Song Pan uh, was not a member of the Standing Committee, and I think it's important to emphasize that. Bon but he did attend most, if not all, uh, plupart, probably not all, but certainly the great majority of Standing Committee meetings. And uh, his name is on the, on the minutes. Son and that is because he was in a Pourquoi? special position. Parce he was um, at the center of power, il though he did not belong pouvoir, to that si center. And it centre. was a, uh, an unusual position, but one which Pol Pot had wished. And one may speculate, and I think I've said this already, hypothèse, uh, that uh, Pol Pot dit, saw Q Son Pan as someone Pol who Pot might eventually take over uh, more and more leadership duties. Um, that is speculation, plus de but uh, in the event direction. it never happened, hypothèse. and it never happened cela dit, cela because ne pas produit, uh, for, for various reasons, but one of raisons, which was that Q Son Pan uh, was not a leader. Pas un leader. He was someone who was extremely useful in the, with, uh, for the leading circle, pour but le did not, in Pol Pot's judgment, Qui, have the qualities ne to become les the de leader or de a senior leader. Chef ou un haut dirigeant. Thank you. Let me ask you a little bit about um, reports and telegrams ce qui les uh, before et we les come back to these telegrams. issues. We sent you a, a series of, of reports nous and that was a representative sample uh, it was 15 documents and obviously uh, in the time we have we won't be able to go through them um, uh, if i can ask you Bien first sûr, whether you've, you've had a chance revue, to familiarize yourself with, with them pu prendre connaissance de ces documents yes Réponse. i have read through all oui, the documents you sent lu tous les thank you que vous just uh, 
again, by way of um, eliciting your, your, your expert opinion on this without necessarily looking at each of the reports. Sans examiner chacun des rapports, uh, j'aimerais avoir votre avis. Are they consistent with other materials you've looked at? This is a sample that you opined yesterday that you've you performed us that you looked at a number of un reports and telegrams. Avoir um, rapports et telegram uh, hier. Is this consistent with the general manner of reporting in terms of que cela uh, avec content les rapports um, and, and information being provided? Du point de vue de l'information communiquée. Yes. Réponse. Oui. Thank you. I'm going to now Question. return to the issue of à présent, the evolution of, of je vais revenir purges that you describe in your book, the events à of 1976 de votre and 1977. And, and here again, uh, we, we must go relatively Ici, quickly, so I, I won't have uh, vite. the time to read all of the Je relevant passages from the book. Pertinent de votre livre. But um, another significant event uh, which Mais you deal with un autre is um, dont vous an explosion which took place outside the royal palace and then a series of events which followed. Ensuivi, beginning with the arrest of a number of soldiers, leading to the arrest of Chan Chakri, et and then ultimately, uh, or rather following him, Chuk. Ensuite, uh, celle de Chuk. Can I ask you to describe for us uh, what significance you place on, on those events? Quelle importance accordez-vous à ces événements? Well, to be very brief, Réponse. it was another, um, Pour être très concis, uh, another stage in the evolution of uh, what one can only call the paranoid mindset of the CPK leadership. Uh, uh, an event would happen which would trigger uh, suspicions which would go in many different directions, in this case towards the eastern zone, towards Chiang Chakre and Chuk, and uh, that would lead to the arrests not only of those people but of all those connected with them in ever-widening circles. And that was the pattern which happened in, in all the zones thereafter. Thank you. Now, just looking briefly at the, at the matter of Chakri, and I, I will not deal with uh, individual arrests uh, except, except for, for uh, only one or two by way of illustration of the uh, uh, evolution uh, of the policy and its, and its significance. Um, I want to take you to an extract of Q, from Q. Sam Pan's book. Un du livre de um, Q. Sam Pan. This is the 2007 book that we, that we sent you a copy of, or rather, we sent you a copy of chapter 5, which we have available in three languages. Un uh, if you could go to page 53 langues, of that translation, and, and I'll give the ERNs and the heures. E number. <laughs> Mr. President, this is E3 slash 16, and the relevant ERNs are Khmer 00380444, French 00643877, and following, and English 00490098472. And in this on this page, uh, Q. Sampan is discussing the uh, arrest of Chan Chakri and, and circumstances surrounding that event. And, event. and he says the following, quote, as for Chakri, Pol Pot had not trusted him for quite some time. For example, at the 9 October 1975 meeting of the Standing Committee, he remarked that even though his, that is Khoi Tuan's division, was strong, the political education of the combatants was not very profound, and Chakri himself was new, and had his position because of Vietnam. We must monitor somewhat closely. It is my understanding that Pol Pot saying this in front of the standing Pol committee Pot was responsible speech, not words of hatred for Chakri because of some matter. He was speaking as a, as a party secretary who had been monitoring Chakri for a very long time. I'm interested particularly in, in the use of the words 
that in Kyusan Pan's understanding, this was responsible speech. Du mot something responsable. that followed monitoring for a long time. Are you able to opine on, on, on that issue of the way Chakri was treated? Que pensez-vous du traitement réservé à Chakri? Réponse. The, the, the question, uh, and I am asking, answering your question, but the question which that, that phrase arises in my mind question, is why did Q Sampan write it? Is it because Q Sampan believed that it was responsible speech? In other words, uh, that he believed that there really was a plot by Chan Chakre uh, and others? Uh, or is it uh, uh, the, the view justifying the purges that he wished to convey? Because my, when I talked about these things with Ying Sari, he basically said that Paul, Pol Pot was, um, he didn't use the word paranoid, but excessively sub suspicious and that most of these so-called plots were figments of his imagination. And I would have thought that somebody in, in Q. Sampan's position would have, would have drawn similar conclusions. So to see him writing that in effect there was a justifiable basis for this kind of purge uh, raises questions as to why he, why he would say that, why he would think it. I don't have an answer. I might be asking an obvious question, but would you agree or disagree that it was responsible speech, this, this monitoring and, and, and um, suspicion vis-à-vis -vis Chakri, if you're able to responsable par rapport à cette surveillance et par rapport à ses soupçons that Pol Pot was suspicious of Chakre, I, th I think there's no doubt. Um, whether there was any basis for that suspicion is a totally different issue. And uh, one would have thought that somebody like uh, Q. Sampan, as Ying Sari, would have formed his own judgment as to whether there was a basis for it. But uh, the, what Mr. Q. Sampan has written, um, yes, uh, does make sense because uh, the whole of the Eastern Zone, the leadership came under suspicion Toute because of their very close links with Vietnam, Vietnam just across the border and the influence of the, of the former Khmer Viet Minh. So yes, it was responsible speech in the sense that Pol Pot was genuinely suspicious of them. Was there a basis, a real basis for that suspicion? That's a completely different question. Uh, I'll move on. Uh, to another topic, we may revisit these types of issues. Um, as we go forward in time, uh, your book also deals with the, the question of a, uh, what I believe you describe as a deteriorating relationship with, with Vietnam, uh, border negotiations in relation to, to uh, the borders. In 1976, and standing committee's deliberations on the issue. Um, and there's a passage here which I think may be relevant uh, to this issue of a view of, uh, of the Vietnamese as engaging in a conspiracy. Um, this is at page 356357 of the book. And the ERNs are in English 00396564 and in French 00639922. 922. And I'm really looking at the bottom of that first, uh, first page, um, en la page en where you describe that a summit that had been planned between the two countries was postponed. And then you say the following. Ensuite, voici ce que vous In public, the Cambodians public, redoubled their protestations of friendship. Cambodians In private, confidence nosedived. Even before the meetings, the standing committee had been worrying about the possibility of an assassination attempt if the summit were to take place, a preposterous idea, but one which reflected the paranoia that had gripped the Cambodian leadership. Can I ask you to expand on your conclusion that this was, as you describe it, a, a preposterous idea? 
pourquoi, à votre avis, cette idée était grotesque I may be réponse. mistaken, but I cannot think of any trompe, instance where a country has invited a head of state of a neighboring country or another country to come to a summit pays, meeting and has arranged the assassination of that leader. Uh, I, I don't think it ever happened, and for very obvious reasons, uh, the opprobrium the, the, that would fall on the, on the host state would be such that uh, there would be much better ways of trying to deal with that kind of problem. problem. Now, just by way of context, you also described the incursions in 1977 into uh, Vietnamese territory by Cambodian troops. Uh, we won't deal with that, but I just want to contextualize where we're going. Um, and this chapter then deals also with the way in which the regime enforced its policy with respect to enemies, and in particular, uh, how it did that. Um, through S21. Par le biais de S21. We won't spend much time on S21, but I wish to uh, read a couple of passages where you uh, uh, describe what you, dans uh, what, uh, I think uh, you see as, as, as the mission or importance vous ce of this que vous facility, être la mission de ce centre. So going to page 364 page of the 364. book, to 364. 365. The ERNs are ERN. French 00639932 and following, and English 00396572 and following. You are dealing with the 1976-1977 mm -hmm. period by way of context. And you say, Je cite. Nothing illustrated better the Rien ghastliness of Paul's regime than S21 and its associated institutions in the provinces, not because of what they were, or totalitarian regimes torture and kill their opponents, but because they represented in its purest form a pure doctrine of extermination. extermination. Over the page, À la page suivante. in the upper half of the page, uh, having looked at atrocities in, in other countries and, and tragic events happening in other countries where tragiques. atrocities have taken place, you say the following, voici ce que vous yet S21 Cependant, was different in S21 ways that set it apart from all other institutions of its kind. De ce type. In Stalinist Russia, in Nazi Germany, in countries like Argentina, de la Russie, Indonesia, and Iraq, de Nazi, the death camps were monstrous aberrations, growing from the dark side of society, which in other respects appeared more or less normal, and where those outside the concentration camp universe enjoyed certain basic freedoms. Tall's length was not an aberration. Instead, it was the pinnacle, the distillation, the reflection in concentrated form of the slave state which Paul had created. And if I can start with that last part, can you tell the court why you came to the view that S21 was the pinnacle and the reflection in concentrated form of the slave state? Because in the dystopian vision that the vision Communist Party of Kampuchea had, du PCK, freedoms were equated with individuality and were suppressed throughout the country. Dans tout le pays. And the place where freedoms were most completely suppressed, including eventually the freedom to live, Réprimé, y compris la liberté de vivre, c'était Wolfsling. In that sense, it was the apex sens, of, of that pyramid. Uh, 
Le sommet However, it, it was by no means unique. Uh, the, de cette pyramide. There is a very close parallel dit, with the French prisons unique. in Algeria, and that is not a matter for this tribunal I, I recognize, but it is perhaps tribunal, worth saying certes, that France is among the countries financing this tribunal, France, la France supporting it. Qui finance et in France, ce tribunal. not one person Or, France, has been brought to trial for exactly the same kinds of offenses as were committed at Portsmouth. If we can come back to um, your view about S21. You do say that what sets apart Torslang from other similar uh, operations in other countries that it was not an aberration, but rather a pinnacle of, of a state. But you also say in, that, in the first part that I read that it, together with associated institutions in the provinces, uh, illustrated the ghastliness of the regime. Um, can I ask you uh, to expand on your on, on this view that they, that or rather on the use of the term associated institutions. What did you mean by that? Vous parlez des institutions qui étaient associées à S21. Qu'entendez-vous par là? I was referring essentially to the district prisons and in each Cambodian district there was a prison under the responsibility of the district chief and uh, offenders, uh, offenders, those whose loyalty, reliability was judged to be doubtful were sent uh, from the collectives if their case was serious enough to the district prison. And again, if serious district, enough, si they would go up to uh, S21. Si um, in, in most cases, those sent to S21 were people who had some responsibility under the regime. Ordinary peasants who were regarded as expendable or should be killed were killed in situ. Those who needed to be interrogated were brought to S21. Thank you. Now, looking at Question. the phenomenon of the use of confessions and, and the development of, of um, theories uh, as part of this, this policy on the part of the regime, Et de there are several very useful théories. and interesting passages in the book, Il y a dans votre livre uh, des and you've already uh, hinted at, at one of them. Vous y avez um, déjà fait allusion, dans un cas. And I might just read it for context uh, so that everybody lire uh, le passage has the specific pertinent pour fixer le context. paragraphs in mind. This is at uh, uh, pages 359 and 360, uh, French English ERNs uh, 00396567 and, and French 00639927 and following. Et what you describe there is the arrests in the second half of 1976 of Nesaran and Khmer. And you say that they were accused of conspiring to create a new Vietnamese-backed Kampuchean Workers' Party. And you said that in your view, no such party ever existed. And Pol Pot very well knew this. Over the page, I'll read this passage. Quote, in the end, the regime claimed to have documentary proof, meaning confessions extracted under torture, of no fewer than six bungled attempts on Paul's life. Many years later, Yang Seri admitted that none of it had been true. There were no coup attempts, he said. It was all greatly exaggerated. In Tout Paul's mind, there were serious incidents, Paul, but in fact, grave. they were a en pretext, fait, a pretext for a crackdown. A, a little bit further down, you say, bas, in simple language, ceci. moderates were traitors. Bref, les modérés étaient des traîtres. So just to, to encapsulate that, 
is it, is it your view that this documentary proof, as, vous, as, you, as, you, as you call it, in inverted commas, uh, was considered significant entre guillemets, uh, by the regime? Uh, was, it, or was it useful? Or what, what, what's the appropriate way to describe it? Comment peuvent-elles être décrites? It was justification after the event. C'était une justification après coup. Ankar, the CPK, was always right. It could not raison. be mistaken. Il ne pas se uh, therefore, to prove it donc, was correct, uh, avait raison, confessions uh, had to be extorted, which would prove not only, um, uh, I would take that back, which would prove uh, to high-level cadres, uh, to whom, niveau, in some cases, these confessions were read out at study sessions, parfois, les that uh, Ankar had been correct. Um, donc que the, the, there is a raison. real question whether, um, uh, and to what extent and in what way, the top leadership, and indeed people like Duc, believed Duc or had placed any credence in the, in the confessions being extorted. That I cannot, I cannot really offer an opinion on. Et je ne peux pas donner d'avis là-dessus. And just a, a couple more um, references before we question. leave uh, the issue of, of confessions uh, and their significance. Citer quelques autres passages. You say at page 358 of the book, you find that the confessions of, were of little intrinsic value themselves and that Paul Pot was not so foolish to put faith Et que Pol Pot in statements pas extracted under torture. Au point une in the book that we've been looking at, aveux obtenus sous la torture. a book published by Q. Sampan, uh, there is reference to these passages Il est fait mention of your book, de ces passages uh, and I'd like to uh, look at them briefly. So again, this is document E3-16, and there are two relevant paragraphs Il y a that I'd like to read. Que je vais lire. The first is at Khmer ERN 0038045, French 00-643-878-9, and English 00-498-273, where he says the following. I think there might be a misspelling here in so far as it, it, it refers to David Short. I think the reference might be to, to David Short. Um, Philip Short. I want to see if I can give you the exact page number. Um, have you been able to, to find that, that, that particular page? Uh, okay, it's 54 in, in the English translation. De la traduction anglaise. So there, uh, in the upper half, I am inclined to agree with suis, David Short that Pol Pot was not so stupid as to believe Short documents that came from the use of torture. Pas idiot au point but de Philip Short seems to have overspoken ce... somewhat in saying that the role of prison as 21 and the confessions Cependant, it supplied was not to provide information but was rather to provide the proof of treason that the leadership needed to arrest those they had already decided. To de donner les preuves de trahison dont les dirigeants avaient According besoin pour arrêter ceux qui devaient être arrêtés. Pol Pot's methodology on any issue was to gather, Pol Pot gather maximum documentation for analysis before making a decision. Pour les analyser avant de une décision. He had even compiled a document entitled Leading and Working Following the 378 Principle of Analysis for Training Combatants and Cadre at every echelon. Let me stop there for a moment. Would you, would you care to opine on that, on that description of, or characterization of your treatment of the use of confessions? cette façon de caractériser votre manière de décrire ces aveux et le rôle qu'ils jouaient. I wouldn't dispute uh, what Q. Sampan has written. Uh, I took the view that the essential purpose was to justify uh, that Pol Pot may also have been interested in the content, uh, 
and may have drawn bits of information from the content, that is entirely possible. But I, I would say that uh, Two, two things. First of all, in the, in the Cambodian foreign ministry, it was a rule of thumb that unless you were mentioned three times in confessions, uh, they didn't bother to, to, to uh, arrest you. And after a while, there were so many interrogations and confessions, it became a rule of, of thumb that you had to be denounced five times before you were under suspicion. Paul himself, speaking about Mern, Pip Chang's wife, said, uh, you know, even if she's denounced eight times, it's not possible that She's, she's guilty, which, which shows at least <laughs> a certain cynicism about the nature of confessions. In your interviews with, with Q Sampan, were you able to discuss with him uh, any of these uh, topics, for example, uh, his knowledge of the use of, uh, of the methodologies that, according to him, Pol Pot used in investigating the cadre? The, the only point in, in what he's written here, which I can confirm we discussed and which ties in with this is Pol Pot's obtaining maximum information uh, before he uh, announced his decision. That was apparently his method. Yeah. Turning to the second paragraph that I wanted to read, this is at Khmer ERN 00380453 to 55, French 00643882 to 3, and 00498277 to 8 for English. And here again, under number 3, I'm going to try and give you a specific page in English at 58, bottom of 58 of the English translation. Quote, because of the clear interference of the Vietnamese that I have repeatedly described above, I wish to take this opportunity to make an observation. The evidence Philip Short provided about the Vietnamese having created the Khmer Rumdo movement, together with the evidence that other researchers have discovered, makes it, makes it clear that all of Pol Pot's monitoring following his 378 principle of Chakri, Chuk, Ya and the other cadre who had cooperated with the Viet Minh was correct. Thus, Philip Short was incorrect when he wrote the role of prison S21 and the confessions was not primarily to provide information, but rather to provide the proof of treason that they needed to arrest anyone they had already decided to arrest. The policy of independence from Vietnam required the implementation of absolute policies inside the country. Now, we've looked, we looked yesterday briefly at the issue of Nous Khmer Rum Do, and uh, you, you, you gave us your opinion about the extent to which that could be taken as evidence of Vietnamese interference. Votre avis sur, uh, Looking at the uh, fait, commentary sur, uh, here by Q. Sampan, uh, do you agree or disagree with his conclusions that Alors, si on prend ce the evidence you've unearthed uh, essentially has, has provided justification for Pol Pot's monitoring and arrests Votre for these people. Finalement, justifie uh, la uh, surveillance. Uh, this is the Pol classic uh, Khmer Rouge CPK uh, explanation, and it became a self-fulfilling prophecy. If you are convinced uh, that the Vietnamese uh, wish you ill. Uh, then you see all kinds of reasons to take measures against the Vietnamese, which in turn uh, the Vietnamese are aware of, and it becomes enmity. Um, now, uh, I'm not surprised that Mr. Q. Sampan should, should write 
as he did. Um, but I would, would again ref return to this word paranoia, a paranoia for which there were perfectly understandable historical reasons. If you look back at what happened to Cambodia over the last two centuries, uh, it's understandable. But it, it, it triggered, it, it created uh, or enlarged a problem which could have been dealt with differently finalement aggraver un problème qu'on aurait pu apporter différemment. So, so do I understand you correctly that there was vous ai-je bien compris vous nous dites there was some basis for apprehensiveness about, about the Vietnamese il y avait quelques raisons um, de se méfier des Vietnamiens but that perhaps the, the conspiracy theory as far as, was, as far as it was taken complot, was not justified or, or, or if, if you can just elaborate on that a little bit further without me putting words in your mouth. C'est ce que vous entendez. Pourriez-vous le formuler vous-même? Je ne veux pas vous souffler la réponse. I think the, 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 the term some basis for apprehensiveness is absolutely correct. Uh, historically, uh, there, there was. And indeed, in Vietnamese, then contemporary Vietnamese statements, there was a basis for apprehensiveness. The Vietnamese did want Cambodia to be, uh, in a sense, subordinate, to be part of a larger entity in which Vietnam would be dominant. That was a reality. Uh, the, the problem was that in the way that the CPK reacted to that, instead of trying to resolve the problem, it made it worse by what I would again say was paranoia. And it, it is that paranoia, if I understand it correctly, which fueled the, 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 the murder that, that, that we see on a mass scale. A alimenté uh, ces uh, tueries. It was that paranoia which fueled the purges, and separately, I, I would not say mass murder, but it was the, the same paranoia that uh, was responsible for the, the determination to push the country to its limits, to build itself up in order to be able to resist Vietnam, causing death from uh, overwork, uh, starvation, exhaustion, and so on. Et les conséquences de cela, c'était la faim, l'épuisement et tout ce qui s'en suivait. In your book, you also describe a, a paranoia of fear that, that was created. Uh, as a result of um, the evolving purges and, and, and arrests. Um, and I won't be spending a lot of time on this. Uh, there's only a couple of passages that are of interest. Um, at page 366, uh, French ERN 00639935, and English 00396574, you say the following. Confessions of treason were needed for men like Ying Suri and Kyu Sam Han to read out at closed party meetings, proving that Anka had as many eyes as a pineapple and that nothing could escape its vigilance. The climate of fear this generated helped to unmask new traitors who were then tortured to make them identify other members of their strings, the Xai, or patronage ne networks, which were the basis of political activity in Cambodia. Can I ask you first, In the research that you conducted, interviews, information you gathered, how, how prevalent was this practice of people like Im Suri and Q Sampan reading out confessions in closed party meetings to prove conspiracies against Ankara? I know of, of two cases which is why I said Kyu Sampan and Ying Suri. Um, whether it was much more general, I really don't know. Uh, it happened. Can I ask you to, to comment further 
on this on this climate of fear because I think you comment in other parts of the book on this being also a phenomenon in other in other, in other parts of the country. Uh, am I right in understanding that this was a, a general a general um, uh, feeling, if you like, or or, or prevailing situation in the country as a result of the purges? Fear was a very important instrument of, of power, of rule for the CPK. And one, one reason why it was necessary is that they were very few on the ground. The, the, the Cambodian Communist Party's membership was never more than about 14,000. Well, in a country of several million, however many million it was, at that time, uh, that, is, that is a very tiny group. So fear was used to instill discipline, uh, fear was used uh, to control the population, uh, but above all it was, uh, it was used to keep the party, uh, to keep the faithful in line. On the issue of decisions uh, that are made in relation to arrests and the awareness on the part of leadership in Phnom Penh of such practices, uh, in, both in, in the capital and, and around the country, uh, you say the following at page 371, French ERN 00639 941-2, and English 00 396579. You first describe some of the brutalities that took place in, in prisons in the regions, and you, you do indicate that some of them uh, were, were similar to practices even before the Khmer Rouge time. And then you say the following. The leadership in Phnom Penh knew of such practices. They were mentioned in telegrams to Son Sen from officials in the provinces. There is no reason to think that Paul and other standing committee members approved, but nor did they do anything to stop them. The seething class hatred of the peasants, however hideous the forms it might take, had to be assumed and embraced. Would it be fair to augment that passage with the specific reports that, that we've looked at, or at least the ones that I've sent you, where there is actual reference to, um, to arrests of enemies, in, insofar as one discusses the issue of, no, of knowledge of leadership. Um, so that you make reference here to telegrams to Son Sen from officials, um, and I just want to see if, if it's fair to augment that conclusion with evidence from these other uh, reports and other sources of information for flowing upwards towards the party centre. I think we're talking about two different things. The reports uh, from to officials to Sansen Sen were about superstitious practices of mutilation, uh, which uh, akin to witchcraft, uh, which are very traditional, which are practiced by the Isaraks and by Khmer Rouge cadres in the countryside. Those the leadership would have disapproved of. The arrest of enemies, no, that was absolutely policy, so they would have had no problem with that at all. Th thank you for clarifying that. It's, it's, it's useful. It's a useful clarification. Now, staying uh, on this page, a little bit further down, you say the following. S21 was viewed in the same way. Neither Paul himself nor Nunchia ever went there, but to each it was an essential instrument of the revolutionary state. Paul himself decided on the most important arrests, sometimes in consultation with Q. Sampan. We've been looking at, or you've given evidence about your, or your conclusions in relation to this relationship. Um, can I ask you whether uh, this is relevant, whether that relationship uh, 
if you, Alors, if you have been able to come to a conclusion, that that relationship of increasing trust si uh, was a reason that Hugh uh, Sampan, as you say, was consulted in relation to the most important arrest. Or is there a different explanation? Avant les arrestations les plus importantes, ou pensez-vous qu'il y a une autre explication The basis for that statement in, in my book, and consultation can have different meanings, so I'd like to specify what was meant there, was I was, I was told and by a source I regarded as reliable, uh, reliable enough to put it in a book, whether reliable enough for a court of law is not necessarily the same thing, that uh, at a certain, uh, during a certain period, Pol Pot uh, used Kyuson Pon for uh, missions Pot into the provinces. And the Kyuson Pon was uh, sent uh, to uh, evaluate a situation Kyo in the provinces and would report back. And on the basis of that report, or partly on the basis of that report, no doubt with other sources, Pol Pot would then decide whether or not to arrest. Uh, certain people in the provinces. So consultation did not mean he asked Q Sampan, do you think we should arrest this, this man? It was much more a mission of information. That is my understanding, anyway. But as you understand it, the mission of information relating to a potential uh, arrest of someone who's under suspicion, if, if I understand it correctly. Le besoin potentiel d'arrêter d'arrêter quelqu'un qui était Yes, and that is very much in Q Sampan's role. He was trusted. Uh, he was someone in, in in whom Pol Pot had confidence to follow the line that Pol Pot laid down to do what he asked. Just before we leave the issue of purges, and we will leave it very shortly, um, I want to touch upon just one more phenomenon. You've already hinted at it, uh, and it is the issue of regional uh, purges. Um, and you describe uh, Tarmok's forces being sent into a number of different parts of the country. Um, and then you describe arrests that follow, uh, ultimately culminating in the, in the east zone. Um, in, in, a, in a purge of the East Zone. Uh, can I ask you to sum up for us briefly your, your findings in relation to, this, to the, uh, the procedure, the mechanism by which this, this occurred, whereby, um, if I understand the book correctly, the decisions made at the centre would then be implemented by, by these regional forces. One of Pol Pot's problems was that he never really managed to unite the armed forces. They remained under different warlords. And the most important of the warlords were, were Kaipok, Sopim in the east, and Tamok. And as time passed, Pol came to rely more and more on Tamok. So uh, in the last years, the last period of the Khmer Rouge regime, uh, when uh, a, a provincial leadership fell under suspicion, which meant because of the patronage networks that very large numbers of cadres in that region would be under suspicion, it was Tarmok's troops who were sent in to, uh, to first of all, arrest them. Uh, Kaipok did the same, the same thing in certain regions, to arrest them and then to replace them with cadres from their own areas, which they regarded as loyal. Thank you. Now, just to look at uh, a couple of speeches uh, which seem to um, relate to, to the issue we're discussing, broadly speaking, um, and enemies and, and their treatment. In, in the bundle of documents we sent you uh, is a 1977 speech given by Q Sampan. Uh, it's an anniversary speech uh, given on the 15th of April 1977. The document number here is E3-201. Uh, Mr. President, 
with your permission, I have a copy which I can pass to the expert with the relevant extracts for his examination. The President, you may proceed. Court officer, please bring the document from the prosecutor to the expert. Thank you, Mr. President. So this is a transcript of that speech, in this case, by entitled uh, Summary of World Broadcasts, which I understand is a BBC uh, publication, which you're probably more familiar with than we are. Um, it's a long speech, so I'll just read uh, one or two passages. And this is on the first and second page of your hard copy, uh, Mr. Short. The relevant ERNs are Khmer 00292803 to 805, French 00612165 to 6, and English 00419512 to 3. And I'll start on that second page and see if that, if that might suffice for our purposes in the interest of time. The second paragraph from the top, quote, immediately after liberation, when we suffered untold difficulties as we had just emerged from the devastating US imperialists' war, the enemy failed to cause us any serious trouble. Today, the enemy certainly cannot do us any harm. This is our firm belief stemming from concrete, practical evidence. However, we must carry on the task of defending our democratic Cambodia, protecting our worker peasant administration, and preserving the fruits of our Cambodian revolution by resolutely suppressing all categories of enemies, preventing them from committing aggression, interference, or subversion against us. We must wipe out the enemy in our capacity as masters of the situation, following the lines of domestic policy, foreign policy, and military policy of our revolutionary organization. Everything must be done neatly and thoroughly. We must not become absent-minded careless or forgetful because of past victories. On the contrary, we must further steel ourselves, remain alert, constantly maintain the spirit of revolutionary vigilance, and continue to suppress all stripes of enemy at all times. It's a rather long quote, but there is a discussion here of uh, suppressing all categories of enemies, including those uh, committing interference or subversion. Does that relate to the policy that we've been looking at uh, in terms of the regime's treatment of its perceived enemies? In that kind of speech, I think you have to see it as a, a coded warning to Vietnam. Uh, we know what you're doing. We know you're trying to subvert our regime. We are vigilant. Uh, we are aware. It's also obviously a call for vigilance within the country. But I, I would have seen that as primarily um, uh, waving a red flag to the Vietnamese. I'm going to move on now to um, considering a, another aspect uh, of, uh, of your book and, and more broadly of the issues that we're, that we're interested in. And 
I want to start by, uh, and this really relates to the, the, the functioning of the regime and, and of, its, of its upper echelons um, to the extent that, 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 uh, uh, that you're able to assist us. Judge Cartwright took you to two uh, documents that emanate from the Standing Committee, one being a minute of the Standing Committee and uh, another actually being a decision of the Central Committee. Um, if I can uh, just take you to these documents and see whether you're able to assist us with some of the, the uh, matters being discussed. Mr. President, if I can first give the expert document E3-182, this is a minute of the Standing Committee of the 9th of October 1975. Yes, you may do so, court officer. Could you deliver the document from the prosecutor for the expert examination? Here we see uh, an agenda which includes a delegation of work and operational processes. A, one office in particular that um, I wish to discuss with you is what is described here as uh, under number eight on the first page that you have, and it's, it's the beginning of the document, um, where Comrade Dorn is assigned as the chairman of political office of 870. You have touched upon the role of, of Dawn. Um, if I have noted your evidence correctly yesterday, uh, I think you said that this was um, that the role he performed was, it was an important one, that it was an executive function, but I'll, I'll let you expand on that first for us. The political office of 870, uh, in, in other countries it would be called the general office of the Central Committee, uh, is the office which is, gives implementation to the decisions reached by the Standing Committee. Uh, it's the transmission belt and as such obviously plays an absolutely crucial role. So then if we look at uh, the second page, or rather the fourth page in your English copy, this is at Khmer ERN 00019111, French 00292872, and English 00183396. There's a discussion here about delegation of work and avoiding having all work concentrated at the standing committee level. And then uh, I wish to look at this following this particular passage. The office of the standing committee makes contact back and forth with each section. The standing committee monitors each section's implementation of the line. The office has the task of monitoring implementation. Is that consistent with, with your understanding and, and uh, the description you just gave us? Yes. I'll just note for the record, um, given that I think this might suffice for present purposes, um, in the 30th of March decision there is a uh, establishment of a regime of weekly reporting to, to Office 870. In the part of the book that we looked at dealing with, with purges, uh, you deal with the arrest of Dawn, who was a, a, a member of the Central Committee, according to the book, um, as well as of his wife. Hussain uh, Pan has said on the record before this court that he, that the, the, this office had as its members Dawn and himself. Le tribunal que ce bureau comportait Do you know uh, whether a replacement was appointed si for Dawn or any other uh, position within that office after his demise. 
au sein de ce bureau. Whether a formal replacement Réponse. was appointed Est-ce qu'un remplacement is, officiel a été is nommé? not certain. There is no documentary Cela evidence that certain. I have seen that Mr. Q. Sampan was named as Dern's replacement. And he has repeatedly, Dern. both to me and in uh, his 2007 book, uh, livre, uh, denied that he was the head of the general nommé. office. Avoir été uh, but à la tête having a, a formal appointment and général, being aussi, uh, a part of the general office, being the acting head, uh, these are different, different things. Certainly, after Dern's uh, replacement, le diriger dans les faits, ce sont deux choses différentes. Uh, no Après, one else, le limogeage the, the name of no one else has ever been cited aucun as having been uh, in charge of the general office. So I think, I think it is reasonable to assume, général. and it ties in Je with what I was saying earlier about Q. Sampan being spent on, sent on special missions to the provinces, that uh, Q. Sampan uh, certainly had an important Q. role in, in the general office after Dern left. Province. Et je parle ici du moment qui a suivi Thank you. le départ de Dern. Looking at the records of attendance at standing committee meetings, and you, you really told us that from the minutes you've looked at, the majority of them indicate that. That Q. Sampan was present. Que vous avez vu, on que Q. Sampan était présent. And I don't want to invite you to speculate here. So if, if you think um, we're entering a realm of speculation, please uh, um, re refrain from answering my question. Donc But le cas échéant, vous does pas à me répondre. that apparent role in Office 870 Mais provide est -ce que ce rôle a, a rational basis for an understanding, at least in part, permet de comprendre au moins partiellement sa présence aux réunions du comité permanent. Réponse. C'est la question de la cause et de l'effet. Paul Pot lui faisait confiance. Il considérait transmission belt, executor, amanuensis. Was it because of that that he was in uh, the general office of 870 and he attended standing committee meetings, or did he attend standing committee meetings because he was in the general office? I, I, I think the two go hand in hand, and it's difficult to say which was the cause of, of the other. Uh, thank you very much. Dealing with the Question. actual physical location of the leaders in Phnom Penh and the functioning of offices, etc., to the extent that you've uh, been able to obtain information on this, les informations que vous avez and you, you have already recueillir. told us about one vous office in particular, K1. Have you been able to? Ascertain in your interviews with Q. Sampan or others, interviews with Q. Uh, Sampan or with other people, how many members of the leadership uh, or operational owners, however one might describe that de group, de direction were present ou de and residing together with Pol Pot, Etat, present au côté de Pol Pot, etc. Nunchia, and des autres, et résidaient avec eux. I, I think Réponse. five were together Je at the bank buildings. Five or six. Among them, banque, Ying Siri, Nguyen Chia, Pol Pot, Q uh, Sampan, uh, Vaughan Vett. Vaughan Vett. Those I'm fairly sure of. À propos de cela, j'en suis plutôt certain. Most of the others you've, you've mentioned. Um, La plupart again, des autres personnes. Taking your book as a starting point. Que vous avez mentionné. Um, et ici, je m'appuie sur votre are, livre. Uh, Described by you as members of the standing sont décrits comme des membres um, du Q. comité permanent. Uh, the à l'époque du Camp Pucia démocratique uh, a compté en 1976, Q. Sampan était membre du comité central, d'après votre livre et ce que lui-même a déclaré. 
Y a-t-il eu d'autres membres du comité central qui résidaient et travaillaient the, the you just, you just avec les personnes que vous venez de citer, hormis Kyosampa Resided with, uh, I'm not Pour ce qui est de savoir s'il si y en avait qui with, résidaient avec uh, eux, je n'en sais rien. Yunyat, the, the wife Pour ce qui est de travailler Sonsen. avec eux, il y avait um, Yunyat, la femme de Son Sen. I'm, I'm trying to think at central committee level. We'll obviously Dern when de he was au niveau uh, du comité central, when he was tandis que Dern in Phnom Penh. Um, No, Quand il était à Phnom Penh, no other names come immediately to mind. Il n'y a aucun nom qui me vienne immédiatement à l'esprit. And you must remember many half the standing committee members were provincial leaders so they were not in Phnom Penh and the same obviously applied to the central committee. Le comité permanent était dans les zones et ne venait pas à Phnom Penh, même chose pour le comité central. In The document we looked at uh, a few minutes ago, this October 75 minutes, Dans le procès verbal de la réunion under 75, the allocation of work and operational processes, intitulée déroulement Comrade Hem is assigned, among other things, que responsibility le for est nommé responsable, commerce, entre autres, uh, for accounting and de la pricing. Comptabilité et de l'établissement des prix. There are on the court's file numerous reports From 1976 dossier, to late 1978, from the Ministry of Commerce to Kyusampan. Um, is, is this documentation something you've had access to, and, and have you uh, looked into his responsibilities in this, in this process? Have you looked into his responsibilities in this process? Have you looked into his responsibilities in this process? Have you looked into his responsibilities in this process? Have you looked into his responsibilities I was aware of the documentation. I didn't do particular research on it because it was not honestly my, my topic, which was Pol Pot. But uh, Tian Mum, who, who, to whom I spoke at length, uh, recalled working with Kyo Son Pan on accounting and uh, the, the price, uh, uh, pricing of products for, for the, the Ministry of Commerce. So I have no doubt about his responsibilities. Can I take you back Question. just for a brief moment to uh, the functions of Office 870, um, functions that one would, would perform within that office, uh, apart from the, the missions you described into the countryside, um, have you collected information or received information on any other uh, um, ways in which the office implemented the, the orders or decisions of the centre and monitored their, its implementation. Ordre du centre et suivait la mise en œuvre de telles décisions. There was a messenger réponse. office attached which took confidential messages to provincial leaders. Um, essentially, my, my understanding, which is by no means complete, is that it dealt Selon with the flow backwards and forwards of information. And its importance was that it was the channel sens. through which all this passed and therefore controlled par lequel tout the, 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 the passage of information. Et par lequel information Thank you. Pouvait être contrôlée. When we question when you were questioned by the bench, I believe on Monday, Lundi, you je pense, gave the example vous ont interrogé, of a, vous avez cité un exemple. Um, uh, a seminar, a Celui d'un séminaire ou d'une uh, session d'éducation presided over or where he taught. And then we looked at a specific passage. Um, in, in that context, if I passage. recall your words correctly, you said si that bien, one of his responsibilities was uh, propaganda, that that was, and propaganda. that it wasn't just in relation to uh, elections, which is one of the areas he reported on at the Standing Committee, but that it was broader than that. Uh, are you able to expand on that at all? What, what, what were the ways in which he carried out those responsibilities? 
propaganda itself was came under Yunyat, some sense why. No, what, what we're talking about are, are study sessions, and all the leaders at different levels uh, had a responsibility for study sessions. Pol Pot and Nguyen Chia at the Central Committee, work conference level, uh, Ying Siri in the Foreign Ministry would hold study sessions twice a year, Q Sompon uh, study sessions at the Olympic Stadium, uh, in other places uh, for the students who came back from, uh, from overseas. They all did it, and, and he certainly had an important role, and I think it was something which he, he, he felt at ease doing, um, because he did it quite a lot. We're coming up to time. There is just one point before you finish uh, the, the last thing. I want to come back to the documents southwest, northwest we discussed yesterday. Thank you. Would you like to do that now? I will very briefly. Um, I I have not got a complete text um, of the document I was using, but I, I have a, a note which is sufficient to say it's a totally different document. And I think what must have happened is that DCCAM gave the same dates, August the 20th to the 24th, to a visit which he paid to the southwest, and they did indeed have a standing committee meeting in Kampong Som, and the document you gave me which describes a visit to the northwest. Uh, if you wish the reference, it is L01022 in the what was described as the Khmer Rouge communications file at DC CAM. That is the document which describes the visit to the southwest. So, that's very useful, and I, and I should apologize for not having addressed this. It was, it was, it was my plan to do so uh, earlier. But we did not so many matters of, of, of interest, and time is short. When you interviewed Q Sampan, he, you, you said on Monday that Sampan, both he and Yen Suri were lundi, tant lui -même happy, if, I think, if I'm using the correct word, to discuss the pre-75 period, but reticent, I think, is the word used de la to discuss the democratic Kampuchea period. Um, if I've got that correct. Um, did you ask them at all as to um, why they were apparently unwilling or reticent to discuss this period? À parler de cette période? No, I didn't. Um, no. Uh, Mr. Q. Sampan, uh, did say uh, we probably, sh after the last interview, we probably shouldn't continue any further uh, because, you know, it's a very delicate, difficult situation for me and, and so on. Um, so at that point, the interviews came to an end. I must apologize to you because my questions now are a little bit disjointed and it's because I'm trying to um, cover a few areas in, in limited time. Um, so if I can take you for a brief moment to the pre-75 period. Um, and if I can... First ask you um, about the appointments in 1971, or election to, in 1971, to the Central Committee. You, you did describe that in that period, um, in, in your view, uh, Q. Sampan, the relationship started to develop, or the relationship of trust, if I'm correct, between uh, Pol Pot and Q. Sampan, and he was elected as an alternate member of the Central Committee, and also moved closer to Pol Pot. Were you able to consider whether that, that appointment to the Central Committee uh, was reflective of this general 
relationship of trust, if, if I am describing it correctly. Correspondait-elle à cette relation de confiance? Si j'emploie les termes corrects. Yes. Réponse. It certainly did reflect oui, that. Oui, cela y correspondait yes. sans doute. Yes, it did. Oui. Q. Sampan has said in his statements to this court that between 1970 and 1975, he stayed permanently with the leadership. Um, in your interviews with him, um, did you ask him about his activities during that period, apart from those that are publicly known? Through reports and, and, and media coverage. Sans parler de celles qui sont connues parce qu'elles ont fait l'objet de rapports et d'une couverture journalistique. I can't, Réponse. I can't probably be much use to you. No, uh, I learned about Mr. Kusampon's activities uh, to the Kusampon. extent that I did, probably more from other sources than from him. Again, it was we, we were getting to the point where. Uh, it was not an area he went, he went into in any great detail. We were at a point where he did not want to enter into the detail. As we move forward in time, Question. Avançons dans le temps. your book describes in, in, in great detail the dans movements votre livre, of the uh, uh, advanced headquarters uh, with Pol Pot moving closer to uh, the city and vous dites que Judge Cartwright Pot rapproché um, asked de you about la ville, la um, Judge Cartwright events in this period, and we covered some of them yesterday. Nous en avons aussi parlé hier. One of your sources for uh, the, the events in this period was, was an individual called Pipun, to whom you referred a, a number of times. He testified in this reprises. court, or described, a, a, a further meeting uh, which took place at Office B5 in early April 1975, which is an office that you described in your book. Un que I don't believe this particular livre. meeting is discussed in the book. It's said to have taken place in early April 1975 and, and to have been attended by Paul Pot, Nuanchea, Kyo Sampan, and a number of military leaders. Et des um, dirigeants and de the topic of the meeting was Selon the evacuation of Phnom Penh, where the three uh, leaders that I've just mentioned were, according to the meeting, According to Pipun, uh, Pipun toujours, agreed with the decision, um, and, and a discussion décision. followed. Après quoi, um, is, is this an event that you're at all familiar with? Is it something you covered with, with Pipun or other people? L'existence de cette réunion, en avez-vous parlé avec Pipun ou avec d'autres? No, I, I, I missed that. Uh, he didn't mention it to me, and no one else did. But I, I, it's entirely credible. Um, I, I think you say they, the all three leaders agreed. Um, yes, the decision would have been taken by Nguyen Chia and Pol Pot, and essentially Pol Pot. Decision had to be taken by Nguyen Chia and Pol Pot, and surely by Pol Pot. But this is not an event that you particularly uh, researched. No, I'm not. Réponse: No. Just looking briefly Question. at the speeches um, that, that Q. Sampan gave during the period, and they do deal with a variety of, of, of matters um, of, of life and policy of the regime, etc. Um, were these speeches important? Were they significant in terms of a, um, a conveying, if you like, of government messages pour faire passer uh, to those, to those that are listening. Du gouvernement aux auditeurs. Yes, Réponse. this was oui. Q. Sampan's role as the public face of the, uh, uh, of the funk uh, uh, and above all of the, of the communist core within the funk. Du noyau communiste au and, sein uh, du funk. He was he was there to reassure um, by his presence and to convey certain messages like the message we discussed earlier about the only the seven were going to be executed. Savoir, message, selon quoi, seuls les sept Thank être you executed. very much. Um, at, at this point, um, question. We're going to do um, with the president's permission. Uh, si a brief multimedia presentation. Um, J'aimerais présenter. 
un extrait in 2005, vidéo. In March 2005, en mars 2005, vous avez prononcé une conférence à l'Université de Californie, uh, Los Angeles, à Los Angeles. Et cette conférence est disponible en ligne sur Internet. Et un enregistrement um, vidéo de cette conférence est disponible sur Internet. Et en préparation um, de l'audience, j'ai examiné la case file avec la vidéo, um, celle-ci a été versée au dossier avec l'accord de la Chambre, c'est le document E260-1 slash 1 barre 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 
Yes, I would. They and many, oui. many others Eux, ainsi who que beaucoup believed that this was the only possible way in which Cambodia could be transformed. Être Thank you. Question. And we're coming up to Merci. my final Nous en couple of questions. À mes dernières questions. As you may be aware, uh, in, the, in the course Comme of this trial, we've heard procès, evidence from Professor Chandler, la déposition du professeur Chandler, who um, also opined on some of the areas that you've, a donné that you've given evidence on. Sur des questions que vous avez vous -même I, I do note that um, you uh, have passant, relied on his books in, in, vous in, in, in your work. There's approximately 170 references in the notes that you've sent us. Environ 170 um, references dans les notes so que vous nous avez envoyées. In the interest of having a, a, a complete understanding donc, of your um, assessment of the functioning of the regime, I want to put to you a couple of regime, uh, extracts vous soumettre of, of the evidence he gave and, de and see whether de Chandler uh, they uh, strike a chord with you. Vous êtes d'accord avec ce qu'il dit. He was asked a number of questions, obviously, about the functioning of the regime on the 18th and the 19th of, of July last year. Posé sur le fonctionnement du régime les 18 et 19 juillet de l'année dernière. He opined in relation to the decision of the 30th Concernant of March 1976, uh, that it was a decision that emanated from a collective leadership, not from Pol Pot alone. And he also opined in relation to the four-year plan, plan that that was a, 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 a document issued or, or generated collectively by a group of people, not by one, by one person, person. So it was a composite uh, or collective effort. And I want to read to you now one particular passage and see if, uh, if I can have your observation. I read to Professor Chandler a, uh, an extract from his uh, book, uh, Tragedy of Cambodian History. And in, in that book, um, he essentially uh, said at one point that by 1977, écrit, the regime amounted to uh, uh, rule le by brother number one and brother number two, who had become synonymous with the organization. So that was the extract from the book. Now, Ça, I asked him about that extract, given that he had opined that um, there was a, a collective leadership during his testimony. Uh, this is at document E1 slash 93.1, so that's his court transcript. And the relevant passage is at Khmer ERN 00825 518-19, English 00827349, to 351, and French 0827505. So now commenting on that passage in, in the book, uh, whereby he described Pol Pot and Nunchi as the sole leaders, he says, and he said the following, quote, that's a passage that after 22 years, I might revise slightly. I've come to the belief that in, I read a lot of, a lot more material since I wrote that passage, passage, that the leadership of Democratic Kampuchea was more collective than I thought. Although, as it, as it comes true in the documents we've seen, the decisions handed down by Pol Pot were the final ones. He was, in fact, the executive leader of the country. And this is certainly true. And this is certainly the way many Cambodians viewed that period. They call it the Pol Pot era. But I do want to say that if I were to rewrite, redo the passage or revisit it, I would say that the leadership was from all the evidence I've seen since then more truly collective than the evidence I had to use in 1990. Plus collective que ne le laissaient penser les éléments 
que j'ai pu Mr. Short, do you substantially, substantively agree with, with that opinion or, or do you materially disagree with it? I don't know what new evidence he's discovered. Um, and that might modify my opinion as well. But on the basis of everyone I interviewed and all the documents I've seen, uh, my impression is that there was a, uh, an appearance of collective decision-making, which Pol Pot one might almost say manipulated uh, to get his own decisions uh, accepted by everybody. But fundamentally, the decisions which were made were those of, of Pol Pot and to an extent Nguyen Chia. That extent we don't know. But they were the couple who, who drove the machine. Thank you very much for your patience. Uh, and your, and your expert opinions. Uh, your Honours, thank you for the time allocated to us. We have no further questions. President, thank you. The time is now appropriate for a short break. We will take a 20 minutes break and return at 5 to 11. Court officer, could you assist the expert during the break? and have him return to the courtroom at 5 to 11. The court is now adjourned.